the following equation represents a key reaction in the preparation of sulfuric acid. The process of the reaction is controlled in such a way that the temperature inside the container remains between 370 degrees Celsius and 550 degrees Celsius at all times. 6.1 says what is represented by the double arrow in the equation. In chemistry, we know fully well that if we have a double arrow, it simply means that the reaction is reversible, right? So 6.1, you just write uh, the reaction is reversible and you get your one mark. And then 6.2 says, why is this reaction known as the contact process? It is known as the contact process because the reaction occurs in the presence of a catalyst, right? So the reactions, the reaction is in contact with the catalyst and therefore is known as the contact process. Uh, now the question you might ask is, which catalyst uh, do we need for this reaction? We need vanadium oxide, right? Uh, so the catalyst for our contact process is vanadium oxide, uh, spelled uh, vanadium oxide. But that's not what the question is asking us. The question just wants us to explain that it is known as the contact process because we are in contact with a catalyst and you get your one mark. And then 6.3 says explain what the temperature is preferably not and then 6.3.1 lower than 370 degrees. So they're telling us that for this reaction we need the temperature to be at least greater than 370 uh, 70 degrees. Uh, we need the reaction to be greater than 370 degrees because if the temperature, yeah, if the temperature is too low, right? If the temperature is too low, then the yield from the reaction will not be enough, right? Uh, because you know that to increase the reaction rate, right, we need to increase the temperature right so that our yield can go up right so the temperature if it's too low the yield won't be enough 6.3.2 says explain what the temperature is preferably not higher than 550 degrees Celsius let's look at our equation delta H is less than zero right so if you increase the temperature too much then the reverse reaction will be favored so you'll be basically converting your products back into reactants and that's not what we want to achieve right so you you must keep the temperature high enough but you must not make it too high because now the reverse reaction will be favored and we will get the reactants again. So here we're saying that a high temperature favors an endothermic reaction, right? A high uh, temperature uh, temp favors uh, an endothermic reaction, right? Endothermic reaction and then clearly the reverse reaction is endothermic right so our reverse reaction is endothermic so if we increase uh, the temperature less products will be formed right so we're gonna have less products being formed and then let's move to 6.4 6.4 is saying for the process above the following information is obtained from the analysis of the equilibrium mixture at 400 degrees Celsius the volume of the container is 200 decimeter cube the initial quantity of SO2 is 50 moles and then the equilibrium quantity of SO3 is 22 mole and then the Kc at 400 degrees Celsius is 7.328 use the information 
above to calculate the initial mass of oxygen that was used for this reaction so we still going to follow uh, the usual technique we use when we want to find kc right but then the only difference here is that we're gonna have a value for kc we're gonna be solving for the oxygen basically right for the number of moles of the oxygen and then from the number of moles of the oxygen we're gonna be able to determine the ma the mass therefore so we have um two as o2 uh, reacting with o2 and then this is giving us two as o3 we know that the reaction is reversible so let's have that there so here we need the initial number of moles right here we need the change and here we have uh, the moles at equilibrium right and then here we have um, the concentration so initially we had um, 50 moles of SO2 so that goes our 50 and then for O2 we don't we're not given right uh, that's what we need to find so that we can consequently find the mass and then for SO3 um, we're starting with zero right and then at equilibrium we have uh, 22 so at equilibrium uh, for SO2 we have 22 right uh, so the change here was plus uh, 22 so now we need the change for O2 right uh, the balancing coefficient here is 2 and here it's 1 right we usually don't write it but we know there's a 1 here so we basically divide in 22 by 2 uh, which will give us 11 right uh, so if we were given 11 here and we're finding the number of moles of SO3 then we're gonna um, multiply by 2 for SO2 uh, the balancing coefficients are the same so we're gonna have 22 here but we're converting the reactions to products right so here we're gonna have minus 11 here we're gonna have minus 22 so what is 50 minus 22 uh, that is 28 and then what is x minus 11 x minus 11 and then now the concentration at equilibrium right so we divide in by a volume of 200 decimeter cube so we have 28 divided by 200 x minus 11 divided by 200 and then we have 22 divided by 200 so now we can see that um the kc is equals to um, the concentration of uh, the products divided by the concentration of the reactions so if we go on with that uh, our product to only have so3 right so we're gonna have 22 divided by 200 to the power 2 right the balancing coefficient uh, divided by uh, the reactants so we have 28 divided by 200 uh, for so2 right to the power 2 multiplied by x minus 11 uh, divided by 200 to the power 1 the balancing coefficient but we given the value of kc we know that it is 7.3 three two eight so now we have to solve for x how are we gonna do that what we can do here we can say that x minus 11 divided by 200 is equals to 22 uh, 22 divided by 200 squared divided by 28 divided by 200 squared uh, multiplied by seven point three two eight right uh, this step here might be confusing to some but uh, it's mathematically true right you can check it out and see if it works so every time when you're solving a question like this in kc you can just take a term in the denominator and swap it with the term on the other side of the equation right 
is true and then from here um, so let's multiply both sides by 200 so that we can get rid of uh, this 200 here right so if we do that we're gonna have x minus 11 is equals to 22 divided by 200 again squared divided by 28 divided by 200 squared multiply by 7.328 and then uh, we multiply in everything by 200 right so now you can see that you just add 11 to both sides and you determine x so if you add 11 to both sides so let's uh, take this entire expression right and then we say plus 11 so now we can erase this minus 11 here uh, we get x uh, being equals to 27 uh, point eight four nine right so now we can use uh, those number of moles to calculate the mass of uh, o2 initially right so we know that the mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass so that will be 27.849 uh, multiplied by 16 multiplied by 2 um, yes so that will give you 891.167 grams this is a bit lengthy you can rewind the video so that you can get uh, more clarity so 6.5 uh, last but not least says the temperature for the process above is increased to 500 degrees Celsius uh, consider the graph and then there we have a graph which reaction forward or reverse is represented by the dotted lines first of all let's focus on the reverse reaction we know that the reverse reaction is endothermic so when we increase the temperature the reverse reaction should be favored the most right uh, more especially above 500 degrees Celsius when we close to reaching that 550 degrees Celsius we're not supposed to reach for this reaction because uh, the products will be too little right so when we increase the temperature the reverse reaction will be favored but the forward reaction will also be favored but the reverse reaction will be favored more because it is endothermic so hence the dotted line and the other line they all go up right but then you can see clearly that uh, this solid line goes up way above the dotted lines right so it is more favored hence the solid line is the reverse reaction so the forward reaction is the dotted line so the question is asking us to determine which line is the dotted line the dotted line is the forward right because we know that the reverse will be favored more than the forward if the reverse reaction is endothermic